Excellency, Mr. Ambassador, first of all, I would like to express my strong support for the sad event at, that happened in Ethiopia, the crash of uh, Ethiopian Airlines. So we are standing with uh, your people and your country Thank in you. this very difficult uh, uh, crisis. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as a geopolitical analyst, uh, I would like to, um, to, to speak about the, the geopolitical uh, change in your country mm -hmm. that are very important. I've been following the changes taking place in, in Ethiopia with great interest. Your country has gone through uh, a 180 degree change in less than a year, which mm -hmm. is quite exceptional. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell us how it happened? Well, uh, first of all, Excellency, let me just express my sincere gratitude and appreciation for having me here today. It's always a pleasure to be here at the European Parliament, and uh, I'm glad that I have one more friend in you. Uh, with regards to um, the change in Ethiopia, basically, the change happened because, one, the ruling party was not in a position to continue ruling as it did and the population could not continue to be ruled as they were. Uh, lack of good governance, the shrinking political space that we had to live through, the economic deprivations, and issues uh, related to uh, equal distribution of wealth. Most of all, we have thousands and thousands of young Ethiopians graduating every year from the universities. We have thousands and hundreds of thousands of young Ethiopians with degrees who are not employed. So the, the request and the demand <coughs> for dignified employment for the young people that we have been graduating from Ethiopian universities also had a push factor in this change that we had witnessed in Ethiopia. The political situation has ameliorated now because the new prime minister has actually decided the benefits of opening the political space in the country where various political convictions espoused by various political organizations could be expressed freely. He had released many prisoners exactly. of it. conscious yes. political opposition groups and individuals. He had invited political parties from outside of Ethiopia who were campaigning. In some cases, armed opposition groups uh, who were fighting the government. Uh, they have been invited into the country to take part in the new political process in a peaceful manner. And above all, I think we have uh, been able to convince the population uh, that these reforms are radical reforms to continue the country on its growth trajectory. And so could you tell us maybe more about this agenda of reforms? Yes. Uh, we will talk later about other chains like yes. uh, reconciliation, yeah. for example, with Eritrea. Well, yeah. It's another story in the, or Ogaden uh, uh, agreement and yes. things like that. Yes. So there are so many changes exactly. uh, in a year, with, yes. which is incredible. So could you tell us uh, more about the agenda of reforms? The agenda Seven. of reforms are basically in three areas. The first one is political liberalization. Uh, the country should be, as it is claimed in its constitution, a multi-party democracy. Up to now, yes, we have various political parties inside the country, but the ruling party was actually the one dictating the political terms in the country. That's not bad as such, provided the ruling party allows other political organizations to have the same opportunities as it has in the political spectrum of the country. So basically, political aspect of the reforms are, as I said earlier, liberalization of the political space and having politics of Ethiopia inside Ethiopia itself, not by diaspora groups or other exile groups. Inside. Inside, every party inside. Today, we don't have any Ethiopian journalists in prison. Today, we don't have any Ethiopian political organization outside of the country. Today, we do not have any um, entities, NGOs, civil societies, media groups, who are not basically acting freely. Everybody has that chance today. The press law, the media law, they have been reviewed. The anti-terrorism law that we were actually being yes. criticized by the European we'll Parliament about, about the, that the, also. The strategic yes. issues and the yes. anti-terrorism yes. uh, uh, policy that, yes. that is very important in yes. the Horn of Africa. Your country is yeah. playing a key role in, mm. in the Horn of Africa. Yes. Uh, Excellency, Ethiopia so is changing. But so is the European political landscape. 
Uh, as you know, we will have European election uh, in May. What do you expect um, for the future of EU-Ethiopia relation from this election? What can be uh, done by the European Parliament uh, to support Ethiopia's reforms? What do we expect from the elections or the incoming new uh, parliamentarians? As far as we're concerned, of course, we cannot, I as an Ethiopian ambassador, cannot dwell on what type of elections there should be within the European uh, Parliament. But I think we need a continuation of the support that Ethiopia has been getting, especially recently, from European institutions. With the Council, we have excellent relations. With the Commission, we also have excellent relations. With the Parliament, in the past few years, we had some we have good relations, but the criticism that were directed against Ethiopia as such, on our side, we were a bit, if I may say, irritated sometimes by the criticisms, even though they are true. On the other side, the European Parliament probably was not, um, did not have many of the details uh, from the government side. That is our mistake in not explaining our positions. But I think in the coming future, after the elections of the European Parliament, Probably, I, we, we as Ethiopia would like to see a continuation of the support that we've been getting, and we would open, we'd be open to have constructive criticisms from the European Parliament members with the view of supporting us and assisting us to continue with our reform programs in Ethiopia. Taking in, uh, in account the very positive reforms that are yes. uh, implementing, I'm very optimistic yes. for the future of Thank our you. relation, for Thank sure. You. You. Ethiopia is an incredibly... Um, a diverse country where people from different religions, different nationalities uh, manage to coexist. And actually, uh, uh, Dr. Abiy Ahmed has a, a, sp a special biography because his father is a Muslim, his mother is a Christian, so it's a, it's a special uh, story. So um, there is a, a special experience of coexistence. What is the Ethiopia experience? Could you tell us more? What can Ethiopia and EU learn from each other? Religious coexistence in Ethiopia is nothing new. It has been there because as the country is an ancient, ancient civilization, Ethiopia became Christian, accepted Christianity in the 4th century AD, 330 AD. We are the second country, if I'm not mistaken, after Armenia to That's accept right. Christianity. Well, exactly. You are one of the <laughs> oldest uh, so, Christian country. And, and, and Islam came to Ethiopia when the followers of Prophet Muhammad were actually sent into exile. They came to Ethiopia, and Islam came to Ethiopia in the 7th century AD. So probably that means Ethiopia could be the third or the second country to accept Islam even after its original place in Arabia. So it has always been there. It has always been there. I think the most important thing with religious <coughs> coexistence in Ethiopia is we Ethiopians, in most cases, consider ourselves to be Ethiopians first, and then a Christian or a Muslim second, not the other way around. I see. The, the problem arises when one considers himself to be a Muslim first, and then a, a national of a certain country, the same with the Christians. It is the other way around in Ethiopia. And of course, through the centuries of Ethiopia's thousands of years of history, the two major religions of the world had coexisted peacefully. People have married each other. <coughs> I don't think it's only Prime Minister Abiy that has that type of a story where his father is a, a Muslim or his mother. So many millions of Ethiopians are like that. That's right. Yes. That's right. That's yes. right. Yes. And, and as you said, it, it's very important. Ethiopian nationality yes. overcomes uh, ethnical differences yes. and religious differences, yes. Yes. Which, which is the main issue for, a, for a lot of African Precisely. countries. Precisely. This uh, cleavage yeah. between the and rivalries between the, uh, if I may, sir, I mean, Ethiopia, as you said, is a very diverse country with various ethnic groups. Ethiopian, the, <coughs> the feeling of being an Ethiopian coexists together with the feeling of belonging to a certain ethnic group. Yes. The same applies to the religious aspect of it. That's so right. Ethiopianism on a national scale, but Ethiopia is composed of various ethnic groups. That's, these are the people that make Ethiopia as Ethiopia. So we also have that characteristics of belonging to a certain ethnic group, but under an, an Ethiopian umbrella. Mm -hmm. Citizenship yes, is, is not built against no, no. No, no, no. Uh, special uh, Precisely. identity. Precisely. That's, uh, that's very important Precisely. to, to Precisely. Ethiopia is a key partner for the European Union. They have a long-standing partnership, as we said it. In 2016, the EU and Ethiopia signed a strategic yes. engagement, which implies close cooperation in areas 
uh, ranging from regional peace and stability uh, to trade and investment and including migration, which is, as you know, a very important issue for EU uh, that, that causes a lot of tensions inside the political debate and uh, also regarding forced deplacement, which, mm -hmm. which is another issue in Africa and especially in the Horn of on Africa because uh, uh, as far as I know, your country has uh, uh, refugees from uh, Sudan, for, uh, from Eritrea, from uh, Somalia. So you, are, uh, you have a lot, you are hosting a lot of uh, refugees. So in your opinion, what are the main strengths of this relationship between EU and Ethiopia regarding all these uh, issues? <coughs> it's a very interesting question because uh, Ethiopia-EU relationship in 2006, uh, <coughs> sorry, as you mentioned, we have signed this strategic engagement agreement, which actually entails <coughs> uh, an expansion and a deepening of the bilateral relations between Ethiopia and the European Union. In the political aspect of the relationship, we have been carrying out various types of dialogues at various levels, including at the prime minister's level. Mm -hmm. And the economic area, the European Union and Ethiopia will continue to be engaged in the new reform process of the economic sphere of the country with the privatization and liberalization of monopolies by the state and job creation especially. We are taking part in uh, President Juncker's initiative of job creation uh, in Africa. Uh, we are doing our best to present certain interesting projects that would be co-financed together with the European Commission, obviously. And of course, on the regional dimension, we cooperate in uh, migration issues, we cooperate on um, ra anti radicalization activities and anti terrorism activities. The most important thing with the regional aspect of our relation is peacemaking and security issues in the Horn of Africa. Um, Ethiopia is an important partner to Europe, both from the political sense of the word, the economic aspect of our relations, and mostly in keeping peace and stability in the Horn of Africa yes, region. It is the second demography in Africa. Yes, sir. More yes, than 100 million yes, sir. inhabitants. Yes, sir. And it's more important, especially when, when it regards Ethiopia's stability. A stable Ethiopia would be beneficial not only for the region, but also for Europe. A secure region would create employment and will decrease the migration push into Europe. A stable Horn of Africa will have its own economic base that will continue to trade with Europe. A stable Horn of Africa will have a regional market for European companies to come in. Exactly. Today, the Ethiopian Parliament adopted the new African uh, common trade, free trade area today, this morning. So that means only one country is left before that initiative comes into effect. That's a whole hundreds of millions of population that will be I believe, attractive to European businesses and companies to do business and investment in Ethiopia. So, as you said, Ethiopia uh, hosts almost a million refugees, yes. which is a lot for the country, uh, yes. huge pressure. Uh, it's fighting terrorism in the Horn of Africa and it's investing massively to create good living conditions for its population. The EU is doing its part to support Ethiopia in its endeavor. What is your observation on this issue? Um, what are the, the endeavors you are expecting from, from EU uh, regarding uh, especially the refugees? And, uh... Well, uh, Ethiopia <laughs> is a big country and it, is in, it, is, it has its neighbors starting from Eritrea, Sudan, South Sudan, Kenya, Somalia, Djibouti. And uh, because of conflict in the sub-region, many people are coming from neighboring countries into Ethiopia because they see to a certain degree that Ethiopia is a stable country and most of all that the population including the government will accept them as refugees. Up to recently the refugees were basically holed up in refugee camps. In certain cases they were allowed to move into cities and live there and but now even for me the most interesting aspect and decision of the Ethiopian my government was that these refugees can be employed in various sectors of the Ethiopian economy. It is very difficult to find that as a directive of a government to employ, to offer jobs to refugees when your own population 
is unemployed. Yes. This had, we had to make a very <coughs> uh, delicate political dancing here, obviously. But I think the Ethiopian people always had been accepting people from outside. It's yes. always been the history and tradition of the Ethiopians. So they are our neighbors. And in most cases, those people who are refugees today in Ethiopia have the same type of their own kins inside Ethiopia. Take the Gambela region of Ethiopia, bordering South Sudan. Many people coming from South Sudan into the western part of Ethiopia are the same type of ethnic group of people that we have inside Ethiopia. Yes. So they are their cousins. For, ex for example, Somali. The Somali. Somali. Uh... You can't do nothing about it. Whether if the government closed the border, it can't do nothing because there I have an uncle, here I have an aunt. How of course. could that be? So I think with the, with the Eritreans, the same thing. So I think the... the, the, the... And that's why, sorry, but uh, yeah. that's why the, this agreement with the Ogaden uh, organization is exactly. very important, something exactly. historical also that exactly. has been done by exactly. your uh, prime minister. Exactly. And this is very important. It is, it is simply acknowledging a fact, exactly. a, reality, a reality, not denying it. Because by denial, we have been denying it for decades. And what we had was difficult situation. It creates separatism. Precisely, and, uh, precisely. Yes. Mm -hmm. So with, with the EU on this aspect of the relationship, I think the refugee issue, we have been dealing with, the, with our European partners. We have been uh, assisted financially and technically in dealing with this situation. And I think Ethiopia has become one of the few countries who have actually offered a future in Ethiopia for refugees coming from uh, neighboring countries. And, and I think that the improvement, thanks to the policy of your mm. prime minister, the improvement of the global situation in the Horn of Africa, thanks to changes in Ethiopia, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. will uh, allow uh, some of these refugees to come back home, which is also important, exactly. I mean, exactly. to, to, to be back home. Exactly. Uh, another point I would like to, to discuss with you, Excellency, is about, uh, and this, this is geopolitics. Your yeah, yeah. country is a landlocked yeah. country. And the agreement with Eritrea that has been done also by uh, Dr. Rabi Ahmed, yeah. is very important because it gives you, it will give you an access to the Red Sea to, uh, thanks to naval facilities with mm -hmm. uh, Eritrea. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us more about that? We are, with the French, we will talk about that after, but we, are, uh, we have a special interest in that because we could help you uh, to build a new navy, a modern navy for your country. This is something uh, Mr. Macron has discussed also uh, uh, in his uh, last uh, uh, visit. And I think it, it, it's important to see all these changes. This is also geopolitics in the region. Well, thank you for this question also. I mean, we had realized that Continuing with the situation that we had lived through for the last 20 years vis-a-vis -vis the Ethiopia-Eritrean relation was actually not benefiting either side. Uh, Ethiopia and Eritrea are almost the same people, but two countries, exactly. frankly speaking. The same languages <laughs> are spoken in, in various parts of Ethiopia are the language in Eritrea. The same type of religion, whether it's Orthodox Christianity or Catholicism, is there. Islam is there. We are same people. It's just a historical incident that we happen to be two countries now. That's a reality. That's true. When Eritrea um, gained its independence, obviously we lost our outlet to the sea. In 1991. In 1991, basically. <clears throat> now, with the rapprochement between Ethiopia and Eritrea, yes, obviously, Politically and strategically speaking, a bilateral understanding and cohesive engagement between the two countries will do much more for IGAD to be a much more efficient organization. Politically and strategically, <coughs> it will mean that the two countries will somehow be in a position to co-direct with the other members of the regional countries the strategy or strategic orientation of the Horn of Africa. It will allow us to continue with our strategic orientation and engagement with our partners across the Red Sea, Saudi Arabia, and the others. Geostrategically, these are the most important issues. When you come to the economic aspect of it, geostrategy, geopolitics also includes the economic aspect of it, that means Ethiopia will have other opportunities of use of Eritrean ports for its import-exports. We have been basically uh, basing our activities in this area on the port of Djibouti. We have been trying to canvas other 
ports in the region from Port Sudan down to Berbera yeah, and Berham. even to um, Mombasa. But this is a very expensive venture. The countries in the region do not have the finances, exactly. obviously, to connect all these areas on, uh, on uh, the But I, I guess the, the Gulf countries are interested maybe to, to invest also in the in this port. And, uh, Everybody's the interested. Every, no, no. The Chinese also, of Everybody's course. Everybody's interested. Everybody, yes. So we will gain another outlet to the sea, which is much more beneficial and less expensive for Ethiopia, using the ports of Eritrea. The ports are being, I think, refurbished now. The Ethiopian side has already completed the roads. It has renovated the roads that are leading to the ports in, in Eritrea. Okay. So we are ready. Once the ports are ready, we will continue to, as we used to, 20 years or 20 something years before. So economically speaking, it will, it will, it will make Ethiopian goods cheaper. It will make Ethiopian exports cheaper. It will actually have logistics organizations and companies interested to come and invest in Eritrea and in Ethiopia, logistics companies who are basically looking for markets in that area because that area, as you know, as more as I do, more than I do, it's the chalk throat for Europe also. 60% of oil or something goes through that, the Bab and Mandeb. Not less than that percentage of, of goods also transit through that area. So the security of that area, the Ethiopia and Eritrea rapprochement also augurs well and benefits it's, Europe it's very important because for of security. trade, for example, market and security. Uh, uh, you, it will help you also to, to fight better against maritime piracy, yes. Yes. against yes. terrorism. So, Precisely. And a great country needs also a, 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 a navy. strong navy. <laughs> that's, that's something very important, I think, in, in the future. It, it will come. This it is, will uh, come. Something. It will come. So uh, I, we talk about the visit of uh, Mr. Macron. He mm -hmm. paid a visit uh, recently to yeah. Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. It was uh, interesting discussing trade, discussing this uh, perspective of the Navy, of yeah. course, and strategic uh, cooperation. And something very interesting also happened uh, because he visited the churches, the old churches of Lali Bella, yes. which is... Uh, uh, a very uh, important site in the world. And, yes. uh, it's not uh, sufficiently known mm. uh, and it has to be uh, known by uh, many countries. And so I'm very happy to, 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 to know that France will participate yes. to the restorations of these right. old churches. Right. So right. could you tell us uh, something about that point? Thank you. I mean, the, there are <clears throat> 12 churches in Lalibela. Yes. Uh, they are say, they are called the rock-hewn churches of Lalibela. They were built in the 13th century, 12th, 13th century. And you can imagine <laughs> how much patience and craftsmanship it required to, to, to craft those, those stones incredible. I, I just by hand. I there, just was, there was the no equipment in those days. <laughs> so I think um, this... Uh, the Lalibela Church are one of the nine or ten um, heritage sites in Ethiopia recognized by UNESCO. Yes. So when France, when Prime Minister Abiy visited France uh, a few months after yeah, he became, yeah. a few weeks after he became Prime Minister, he raised the issue with President Macron and with heritage restorations and similar issues. Basically, France is one of the most globally renowned country and expertise in that area. So thankfully, President Macron uh, positively uh, accepted our request and he visited the church in Lalibela. And I think there is a, a team of experts from France that already came to, to oversee what should be done, how it should be done. And it's it, one of it the most... really needs special expertise, exactly, this type, exactly. this type of exactly. churches. I mean, it's built in the 12th, 13th century. Yes, I mean, so yes. and it's it old. has been carved out in, in carved the rock. Out of, yes, so. I think you should go and see it, because I, it's a I very will, interesting definitely, place. Definitely, I will uh, travel you to You know, the your most country. interesting part... I've been in Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa, yes. Uh, um, <laughs> but never... Uh, but Lalibela, it's, the, the most striking aspect of Lalibela is you will not see it until you arrive there. Just like you, you walk... Yes. All of a sudden, there because is a it's hole, it's and, and it's there, you know. Uh, so it's a very interesting touristic site. It's being recognized now as one of the touristic sites to be visited inside Ethiopia. So I think France's engagement in this is very positive and helpful. It will actually help Ethiopia to further introduce its own heritages uh, to the rest of the world. And I think this also means that we will be cooperating with France in the touristic sector also. The tourism sector will need some support from France. 
and I think there have been certain agreements in that regard also with during the president's visit to Ethiopia. Excellency, to conclude, I will say that your country is really a key uh, player in the Horn of Africa, not only in the Horn of Africa, in Africa. Mm. It's, it's one of the main economy. It's very active. We have uh, very active reforms now. The agenda of reform yes. is, is full uh, and very positive. And I would add also, we talked about geopolitics. Yes. It's a very important uh, strategical player against terrorism, mm -hmm. against maritime piracy, regarding the refugee crisis. So, so there are so many topics we could discuss on. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for this discussion. Personally, I'm very interested in the future of your country, which is an example in terms of coexistence of different identities inside the same citizenship mm -hmm. and strong cohesion. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. I mean, I really appreciate having been here, and thank you so much for your uh, uh, friendship and partnership, especially your personal engagement on issues about Ethiopia. And I personally look forward to continue to meet with you, and it's a real pleasure to have met you today, and thank you once again. Thank you again. Thank you, sir.